What is up, Jabronis? JJ back here from Umpire Bets with another free pick for it. This time it's going to be Major League Baseball for Friday, June the 25th. Game is going to be played between the St. Louis Cards and Pittsburgh Pirates. Going for the Cards is Kwang Young Kim, and for the Pirates is Will Crow. Current betting spread is Cards minus 162. Total nine. All right, so I dropped the Marlins money line minus 105 from Tuesday's vid. Moves these places 17 and 8 plus 9.5 U. I know, I know. Cue the tiny violins. Um, tell you what, my absolute worst nightmare <laughs> with that bet. I mean, I mentioned in the video how tilting it would be if the Marlins won the first five and or uh, lost a super close, low-scoring game because the Marlins' bats did not show up, which is always uh, something that could happen when you bet the Marlins. Uh, both realities actually came to life. Um, look, I play the first five there. I'm a genius. I play the full game, though, and I'm a donkey. Um, honestly, I, I you know play that back again, and I would stick to the full game as being the better option. Look, Alcantara threw great, but... The Jays won't get shut out through five often, and I just expected more from the Marlins' bats as a whole in that game, especially with the matchup against Stripling. Um, but by the way, that game is a perfect example of what I consider good managing, poor result uh, for Don Mattingly on the Marlins' end. Uh, you see, like, I don't always attack the managers. Um, I liked that Alcantara got pulled actually with 86 pitches for uh, Yimmy Garcia, Marlins' closer, and look, he had the bottom half of the uh, bottom middle half of the order, and he, if he holds them there, the Marlins have two, three, four up to win it, or at worst, extra innings. Now, he hangs a few curveballs, and sure, the rest is history. But despite losing, I like that decision by Mattingly, um, who I actually have as a net neutral manager, a uh, guy who's going to you know win his team just as many games as he's going to lose them. Um, all in all, we move onward. Um, you know what? Let's do, um, let's do a little story time, right? I haven't done that in a while. Um, I don't think I've also shared this ghostly experience with you guys yet, so it's uh, kind of been a long time coming. Years ago, um, I, had a, I had become a familiar face at the building I had worked within outside just my office, um, and I used to spark brief conversations with the security guys at the front. Uh, one guy, though, absolute nutcase. I'll keep names out of this to protect the innocent. Just know this dude was batshit. Um, as you guys should know by now, I fuck with these types of people. Remember, though, normal people are never any fun, right? You hang out with some crazy folks, and that's when the shit really gets fun, right? Or crazy. Uh, so anyway, I walk into uh, the building on like a Tuesday, a random Tuesday. Um, this guy at the front desk goes, yo, Jay, you got a second? I really want to show you something. He's like some real crazy shit going on here. Um, I'm like, yeah, got a few minutes. So he goes here, swing around. I want to show you something on these cameras that I saw last night. Get your thoughts. He then asks me if I believe in ghosts or spirits. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of like on the fence. Um, for me, they're kind of like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy. Um, he goes, come on, bro. Those things aren't real. But ghosts and spirits are. I'm like, um, okay. Uh, so he gets in front of the camera and rewinds it to about 3 a.m. Um, and goes, look, check this shit out, bro. Ghosts inside this, uh, this building. I've been hearing noises and shit the last few days, and, and this was like the icing on the cake for me. So I look at this footage, and mind you, it's a piece of fucking dust slides across the camera, right? Uh, and I see it once, and I'm like, uh, hold on, let me let me see that shit again. He goes, I know, right? It's crazy. I knew this place was haunted. Ghosts and spirits just roaming around. So he plays it back again, and I confirmed it was actually a few pieces of dust that went across the lens in the camera. Uh, but the way it showed, I could see how he would think it could be that, but I mean, you know, that's an awfully optimistic mindset if you want to believe in that stuff so i look at the cameras back at him and, and back at the cameras and then back at him and and i'm like dude this is the craziest shit i've ever seen i mean put me down as a believer and if i were you i'd get the fuck out of this place i mean you ever see those like exorcism movies i mean one minute you'll be here 3 a.m minding your own business watching the cameras next thing you know you'll be in the fetal position hanging from the ceiling i've read about these things and they're really nothing to play with he goes bro stop you're kind of scaring the shit out of me um, and he goes, I, you know, I want to bring this up to my peers that I work with, but I don't want them to think I'm crazy. I'm like, yeah, God forbid that happens. Uh, so I go, anyway, look, my man, prayers up and God bless. Um, something seems like it's following you around this building. But look, I'll see you tomorrow. Dude resigned the next day. Never saw him again. Things you hate to see happen. All right, on to the play here. I'm going to go a bit unique here, uh, but this is a spot I really like. So Pirates, team total over three and a half runs. Got this minus 110 at Bet MGM in New Jersey. Um, I like this. I mean, like, I get it, this being like a calculated math line, if you will. But this is not taking into account enough angles coming in. Pittsburgh Pirates are by no means a good team. And, and some would even argue they're one of the worst teams in baseball, sure. Overall, I'm not going to disagree. But they've been dealt quite the injury bug this year. And, and, and sure, what team hasn't though, right? But there's more to this story. Pirates team is a practical full bill of health right now and, and relative to their bats. And this is shown recently. Uh, while yes, they've been streaky like all Major League Baseball teams with their sticks, this team is swinging the bats pretty well coming in. Three runs or more in five of their last six. Six runs or more in four of their last six. And it's not like they've been seeing bad pitching either. 
Um, you know, while they are a better team versus right-handed pitching, they draw a very susceptible left-hander in Kwang Young Kim. Now, Kim comes over from the KBO last year, and he's been nothing short of stellar. Uh, a bit of a lucky season last year, though, with his 1.62 ERA, his, his advanced stuff was in the threes, basically double that. And, and this year, he's kind of regressed a bit more to the mean, ERA at 3.6. But his advanced stuff's actually worse than it was last year. Now that's in the fours. It's a walk rate of over three per nine, average at best K rate, 22% line drive rate are all red flags or at best orange flags. Um, he throws a good assortment of pitches, but really wants to get ground balls with his slider, uh, which he throws a ton. He's real good versus lefties, quite the opposite versus righties. Based on the platoon situation, I'd expect Pittsburgh to start at least five righty bats here, platooning some extra guys. Uh, like, I expect two out of these three guys to sit between Moran, Polanco, and, and Gamble. Um, they'll be replaced by Evans and Gonzalez. And this is going to put extra pressure on Kim from the right side. The other thing with Kim is he is not an innings eater by any means, and, and he's pitched six innings just once all season. This is important because the Cards' pen isn't exactly all that. Like many teams, though, the Cards have strong hold guys. If they have a small lead late, uh, guys like Reyes, Galagos, and Cabrera. But after this, things get real spotty. And if you're going to say Andrew Miller, I mean, yeah, he is not near what he once was in the league. De- you know, definitely not back to his Indians days. Now, sure, if, if this script goes perfect for the Cards with Kim going six innings and then you know leading by three or less, sure, you'll see that order that I just mentioned from the um, from the Cards pen. But anything different, and this pen's very susceptible. Also, once Kim is out, I expect the Pirates to then begin to pinch hit some of those lefties that uh, sat to start the game. I think the Pirates can certainly put pressure on Kim throughout, though, regardless. Um, with them being the road team here, we know we're guaranteed nine at-bats. As for weather, a cool 100-degree game time temperature. 12-mile-an-hour winds blowing out to left field. Now, of course, wind is always susceptible to change. But again, that's what it says right now. Um, uh, this is definitely weather that won't hurt it over. And The park in St. Louis is by no means a hitter's park, but in weather like this, it is certainly not a pitcher's park, I'll tell you that. Now, I don't want the over uh, in the full game or, or to bet the Pirates' money line here because, quite frankly, I don't want Will Crow's performance to decide this bet for me, and uh, I want no part of this Pirates' pen late if this is a close game. Um, I think the Pirates are live to win here, but keeping the Cards' bats quiet is not something I want to have equity in this spot. Uh, all in all, I get a team in the Pirates who's really finding their stride uh, with the bats. Uh, even with the home run ball, too, uh, they draw Kim, who's been susceptible um, to foot traffic in nearly every start and, and very vulnerable versus right-handed bats. Petting the score, um, middle of the pack bullpen is going to follow Kim. Doesn't exactly eat innings, and the weather is going to be scorching hot, wind blowing out to left field to help things. Three and a half runs at minus 110 for the Pirates uh, is a match line correlated to a pregame number that I just simply have off. I'd lay up to 120, and I still have value on this as I cap it all the way up to 135, uh, making an auto fire for me at 110. Uh, so again, my play is over three and a half runs for the Pittsburgh Pirates versus the Cardinals. Got this minus 110 bet MGM in New Jersey. May the odds be ever in our favor. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, thumbs up. Create some fake accounts more. Thumbs up. If you did not enjoy, hope you wake up with pubes in your mouth. As always, drop comments below with your thoughts on the vid. Let me know who you are betting for tomorrow's slate. Um, also, if you're somebody who watches these videos and never even comments, I mean, what are you doing? Water's warm. Dive on in. Comment, and I always respond to you guys anyway. Um, We'll also have content lined up on our channel all weekend. UFC, Major League Baseball, NBA, even NASCAR. So stay tuned for that. Spread Tower, DFS crew, have you covered for NBA. Joey and Keg, have you covered in UFC. Keg also holds it down in NASCAR with Coop. Um, I'll be live on Saturday talking Major League Baseball. And we'll also have another live baseball show on Sunday. Check us out, rumpyourbets.com. See what we are all about. And as always, be sure to gamble responsibly. Stay safe. And thanks again for watching, folks.